Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my football manager series this is episode number 26 and today we are returning with the final two games of the premier league season as you take on stoke city away and play host to sunderland on the final day before we play those games though because show you how whole have been getting on off camera so of course in the last episode you saw our 1-0 victory over Newcastle United and then our 2-0 defeat away at Old Trafford. I then played several games off camera and I did say if we were struggling and put into a relegation scrap I'll come back sooner but instead things have been quite inconsistent but good enough for us to stay in mid-table. Uh, we began our off camera on a 2-0 defeat at home to Spurs, hardly a surprise but then we beat their North London rivals Arsenal 2-0 at home in a crazy game. Uh, we gave away a penalty in the first half, Raj saved it and then Cochrane got sent off like minutes afterwards. Then we scored or two in the second half and, and won the game against 10 men Arsenal so what a result that was and one of our biggest scouts of the series so far then we lost 2-0 to Liverpool uh, then we beat Watford 1-0 this is just such a really inconsistent run then we lost 1-0 to West Ham uh, and then we beat West Brom 3-2 then we beat Reading 1-0 and then we lost 2-1 to Leicester so a very inconsistent run and I just want to point out we've not drawn a game in the Premier League since November since the 30th of November that was the last time we drew a Premier League game every game since then has been a win or a defeat but anyway right now in the table as you can see two games to go we are of course safe the bottom three have been confirmed Everton are going down last year they just about kept themselves in the Premier League with a late run this year they haven't been able to do it they're going down to the championship and when you look at their team I think it's safe to say I am certainly going to be trying to snap away a couple of those players in this lineup but uh, yeah Everton are going down and uh, right now we're in 10th and we can finish today as high as 8th place I do believe which would be incredible if we could do that or we could finish as low as 12 regardless of what happens in the final two games we are guaranteed to finish higher than we did the previous two years and all through the series so far which is fantastic so we are still making progression even if it's baby steps and we got more points than we did last year as well so it's been a great season and now let's finish strong and uh, so let's just dive straight into the first game of today's episode. We're away at Hillsborough to take on Stoke City. And you might be wondering why we're playing at Sheffield Wednesday's ground. And the reason being is because Stoke are expanding their stadium. And uh, they're currently ground sharing with Sheffield Wednesday. So did I just say Sheffield United? I think it's Sheffield Wednesday. Well, no, Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, they're playing at Hillsborough right now. Don't you just love FM? Don't you just love the in-depth uh, aspects of Football Manager? So uh, yeah, we're in Sheffield today and uh, not in Stoke. But anyway, uh, first game today is against Stoke. Again, I'm not really too fussed what happens in the final two games because we are of course safe and we've guaranteed a place uh, in the Premier League for next season uh, and higher points than last season and a higher finish as well but uh, this will be the team for the game then stick with the 4-2-3-1 I really like this I mean I really really do finally I've got a, a shape that I like instructions that I really like and everything seems to be going really well right now and uh, we'll go with this formation and lineup then uh, Raj is in goal it's back for a time and Deem of Carter Vickers and Walker Peters in midfield Obiang and Saidi and in the attacking midfield trio Olivier's on the left Leko's on the right and Oscan is our attacking midfielder. Tammy Abraham starts up top today. A rare start for him, and this is the reason why. Heaton's on the bench, as in Maguire, Robertson, and Dai Ivan Delafeu. Uh, Donnelly got a light injury, so he's not fully fit for this game. So we'll play him in the next game, but leave him on the bench for this one. And uh, Falcao is now out as well. So we got a couple of players injured. Falcao's out. Hernandez is out right now. Fulquier's just coming back to fitness, but probably won't play any more parts in this season. And also Donnelly just returned from injury too. So a few injuries to deal with of late, but uh, it's, it's okay. We're doing fine. And, uh, and there you go. So first game, Stoke away at Hillsborough. Can we get a win? Let's find out. Come on, Hull City. Really is weird how it's happened again, though. You know, just like last season, we were struggling. We were really fearing the worst. And then mid-season comes around and we just excel. Like, we just, we turn into a totally different team and guarantee safety for another year with several games to go. Next season, I want us to play much better at the start of the season to make sure we don't have to rely on a mid-season run, though. Because it's getting to a point now where it's like, is it going to happen this year? Are we going to have that run? I don't know. But anyway, first time out of the game as Josh Tyman finds Willie Olivier down his left-hand side and crosses to the middle. And there is Tammy Abraham. Oh! my goodness why on earth have I not been starting Tammy Abraham second goal of the season for him and it's 1-0 hole and as things stand right now we are going to finish in the top half of the table which is unbelievable Willie Olivier down left hand side crosses to the middle picks out Tammy Abraham lovely first touch control it and then rifles the boy into the bottom corner across the keeper 1-0 to the Tigers perfect start now, Hernandez has not scored a single goal this season. That's why I've not been playing him. You guys have been saying, why don't you play Hernandez? He was so good in season one. Yeah, I know, but unlike in FIFA, players do decline earlier than 30. 
and uh, he's not been good at all this year. And Abraham, he's only had a few games this season, but uh, this is his first Premier League start. I think he's made it 1-0, and Jonathan Laco has made it 2-0. Oh, get in, 30 minutes in. We're dominating possession. We're two goals up. We're loving life. This is brilliant. Abraham to Saidi, and another assist for Saidi, who has been an amazing pickup in January, and Laco fires it in. I know it's called Leco, by the way, not Laco. Someone did comment in the last episode saying, it's not Laco, it's Leco. I, I prefer Laco. Leco sounds like a lizard, but anyway, it's 2-0 hole, and uh, we're on fire right now. Good chance here for Stoke though. Ranking Costello finds Ramadan and Ramadan crosses to the middle and there's Berahino. Oh well, my word. Raj, what a save that was. Unbelievable stop. Flung himself across his goal line to make that save. Still 2-0. What a stop by our keeper. But the ball's still not fully clear here. There's another highlight for Stoke as Bielik goes for goal and finds the back of net. Well, Raj just made a brilliant save. Then he's beaten from distance. Sums up his career here at Hull. Sometimes Raj is unbelievable. Sometimes he's just awful. It's a good strike by Bielik, though. It's over him and into the back of the net. Maybe he could have done better. He wasn't right in the corner, but decent strike. 2-1. Now let's not capitulate. Come on. Stoke putting the pressure on in this second half. In Bula finds Ryan Shawcross on the edge of the area. Oh, Jesus, Ryan Shawcross can shoot from distance. Who knew that? Oh, but he goes to Slough for offside. Berahino. What? Was he interfering with play? That happened so quickly, I didn't really see. He must have been interfering with play, and that's why the goal's been disallowed. But it's all Stoke in the second half, though. Another chance here. I've got to change things at this rate. Dimov heads away to corner, but straight to Ozan. Now Ben Yedder out wide towards Boschilla. Chance still alive. Obian clears, though. Well done. And now Abraham on the board. And a chance for a whole city counter-attack. Leko down this right-hand side. The Lizard down this right flank. Can he cross to the middle where Abraham is waiting? And oh! Dear, oh dear. I mean, I should be grateful for Raj when you see that sort of stuff. Jack Button, what a howler. Well, the former West Brom man ain't going to claim that one. He crosses to the middle and Jack Button has dropped a clanger. What a howler from the English international. 3-1 hole. There was a spell of pressure for Stoke, but now we've got our two-goal cushion back and we should be able to see out the game now. So coming towards the end of the game, but Stoke have a chance here and they've scored as well. But Schiller's put the ball in 3-2. This is a crazy end to the season. Stoke have once again pegged us back. And the game is not over yet, it seems. Ramadan kept the ball in play, whipped into the centre. Imbula gave it to his teammate. And a good finish by Bushilla beats Raj. 3-2. Is there going to be another twist in this tail? So we're almost there then. Just five seconds left of injury time. Where is that final whistle referee? There it is. It's all over. Stoke 2, Hull City 3. We get the win at Hillsborough. And that means, guaranteed, we are going to finish in the top half of the table for the first time in the series with a game to spare as well. And we could finish as high as 8th place. Well, mathematically 7th, but of course 8th realistically. That's, that's brilliant, man. That is absolutely fantastic. We got ourselves another win. We've guaranteed a top 10 finish for the first time this season. Oh, well, we, we are making improvements. I mean, you might not think it sometimes in the episodes I'll show you, but we are making improvements and we're becoming a better team and a bigger club. Come on, Hull. All right then, guys, we're moving into the second and final game of today's episode as we play host to Sunderland in a 10th versus 9th battle. I think me and David Moyes deserve a raise each. Um, so here we go then. It is the final game of the season and uh, both teams desperate to finish ahead of one another. Me and David Moyes are that bitter rivalry which sort of died down after the first episode. But uh, hopefully we'll get a win regardless. Um, I think I might stick with the same team to be honest. Um, but I'm not I'm not too sure. I might put Milonas on the bench because we might not ever see him again and possibly bring him on at some point. And uh, I don't I don't really know who to put on the bench because Snodgrass is going to go as well. I, I want to play players that probably won't be here next season. Snodgrass is going to go as his contract's not coming at the end of the year. Um, Vermala might end, go, end up getting sold as well. Um, yeah, let's let's ju let's just get into the game, shall we? Um, so this oh Hernandez as well. Um, let's 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 not play Donnelly on the final game. Donnelly's done for the season. Donnelly's done for the season. So uh, this will be the team for the game. Uh, Raj in goal, back for a Timon, Dimov, Carter, Vickers, and Walker Peters in midfield. Obiang and Saidi. In fact, Minlo Milonas and, and Saidi. You know you can't really do the board. Actually no, don't don't be stupid. Obiang and Saidi. Um, third forward, Olivier's on the left, Lakers on the right, and Oscan is our attacking midfielder. Tammy Abraham, who scored in the last game, keeps his place up top. So on the bench. Heaton, Vermaelen, Robertson, Malona, Snodgrass, Delafeu, and Abel Hernandez. So, second final game today. Come on, Hull City. Let's close out the season with two wins from two and finish in ninth place. Let's get it done. So, first highlight of the game, and it comes 13 minutes after the restart as Ozcan is on the ball finding Tammy Abraham. Can we get a chance here as Pedro Obiang on a booking plays it through to Tammy? And Tammy gets round one, and Abraham, oh! Well, he did such good work there to get himself free and then totally messed up the finish. That should have been 1-0. 
Okay, so into the final 10 minutes, still 0-0, very poor game this one. I've brought on Abel Hernandez, I've brought on Snodgrass, I've brought on Manonaz for possibly their final appearances for Hull, but unfortunately, I don't think they're going to have any involvement as the clock is about to run out on this, our fourth Premier League season. So, final score will surely be Hull City 0, Sunderland 0. It's our first draw since November, I did briefly mention it earlier, finally we've got another one, and um, in less... No. So there you go then. It's it's 0-0 and uh, we end up finishing in 10th place and Sunderland stay ahead of us by goal difference. God damn you, David Moyes! So um, we'll say calmly we're unlucky. I don't want to berate the team as we go into the end of the season and, uh, and, and, and that will do it then. So I have to say, despite the disappointing final game of the season, what a fantastic season it was. Hull City finishing in 10th place, our highest finish yet, our highest points total yet with 51 as well. Only finishing behind Sun along goal difference, making it into the top half of the table for the first time in the series so far. You know, some of you guys have been saying, you know, you need to leave Hull, go to a bigger team. It's not really that easy in FIFA. And one thing you should remember is that if you've never played this game before, progression takes a lot longer than it does in, in career mode. You know, in, in four years in career mode, you can go from like a, a championship side to Champions League winners. With FM, it takes a lot longer. It's a lot more realistic in terms of progress um, and, uh, and development. So you've got to realise this is actually pretty good. This is pretty good for Hull to uh, to be in 10th place four seasons in. So I'll certainly take that. And the future's still looking very bright for Hull, I must say. It's still looking very, very good. We've got a lot of good youngsters in our team right now. They're just getting better. And the team continues to improve and, uh, and look really good. So great way to end the season. And uh, I'll end it by showing you the initial budgets and all that stuff as well. And I'll see you in a moment's time. See, there you are. Record high for Hull. 10th place. It's a new record high for the team. I'm making improvements. I'm making improvements. You might not think it, but it's true. I am making improvements. All right, so here are the end of season awards then. Uh, player of the season was Josh Timon with an overwhelming 47% of the votes. That's fantastic and probably deserved as well. He was consistently great all season long. And we love Josh Timon. He's still wanted by, I think, both Arsenal Spurs. No, just Arsenal now. But this guy's going nowhere. He's got three years left on his deal. And I'm going to do whatever I can to keep this guy at home. I'm not letting him go. Um, goal of the season was Dos Santos v. Bournemouth. I remember that one. That was in the FA Cup. He scored from about 30 yards out. Amazing. Uh, Willie Olivier was the signing of the season, which is quite bizarre, really, when he think about Dimov coming in this year uh who else do we sign this year it was quite good can't can't think off the top of my head but uh, Olivier signing the season he played 11 games in the league and got one assist like I, I mean that's surprising I would have given it to Dimov personally but fair enough and uh, and young player of the season as well as player of the season was Josh Tymon uh we got our end of season team report a uh, few of the tipped holes who have been capable of avoiding relegation heading into the season with the tides confounded every expectation by achieving the top half finish I think they've said the same thing for the past four years um well past three years and, uh, and let's go for our end of season team meeting them. Um, and we shall say calmly, um, the season is finished now and it's time to focus on what we can achieve going forward. I think we can achieve a mid table finish next year and you need to come back for pre season with the same level of ambition. Hmm. Or do I want to say it's been a long season? I hope you've all had a good break. You're going to need to come back fully refreshed because I'm aiming to finish in the top half next time around. Well, we did finish in the top half this year, so calmly I'll say that again. And everyone is totally happy. That's exactly the sort of reaction I was after. Everyone's pleased. The the board are very pleased with us, no doubt about it. We may have failed in the FA Cup this year, but who cares, right? We uh, we did what we need to do in the league and then some. And, uh, and yeah, there you go. So I shall wait for the initial budgets. We'll see that. And then we'll bid farewell until the new season begins. Okay, so the board have set our initial budgets, and as you can see, they are 37.7 million in the transfer budget and 1.2 million in the wage budget, which is fantastic. This is, I do believe, the second highest amount of money we've got for a new season since the series began. You can take a look at our finances right now. We've got 42 million in the bank. I have got such a great tight control on our balance here with Hull. And, um, and yeah, what a great way to end today's episode. Everything is positive and everything is good. So uh, in the next episode, guys, we are not going to start the new season. I've decided what I'm going to do is have sort of like a mini break before the new season starts. Um, and I'll start the new season on Saturday morning. But the next episode is going to be uploaded on Thursday. And that is going to include like a, a more detailed look at the club and the save as well. So I'll be showing you stuff I don't normally show you, like the coaching setup and things of that magnitude. Um, if there's anything you want to see in that sort of like bonus episode of FM then let me know what it is in the comment section down below and if enough people want it then I'll show that as well but it would just be like a, a more detailed look at the staff system and 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 you know what's going on around the world and stuff so that would be a special sort of like you know 
not not off of topic FM episodes. It still is on topic, but it's sort of it's just it's just more detail. It's just more detail, and that'll be out on Thursday afternoon. And uh, the new season will start on uh, on Saturday morning. So yeah, if there's anything you want to see specifically, let me know what it is in the comment section down below, and uh, I'll try and get to it. So that will end today's episode of the Football Manager series, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. It. If you did, then please do leave a like. Um, it's been a crazy, crazy good season for Hull. We've done much better than I thought we would have done. God damn it, Carl, because I hate Red Arrow so much. We've done much better than I thought we would have done at the start of the year where things were looking really, really worrying. We excelled in mid-season once again. We finished in the top half of the season for the first time ever in the series. We are continuing to making strides forward with Hull. Things are looking good for the future. We've got a young team. Everything's looking great right now. And uh, I'm just excited for season five where hopefully we can continue to make more progression and get even even better than we have done in the first four years. So a big thank you for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the special, more detailed look at the save in the next episode, which will be coming out on Thursday. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you for the next episode in my Football Manager series very soon. Bye.